Well, hello, my friends, and happy Sunday to you. Look at this sweet, sweet girl we're making today. Oh, I just love it. So I'm starting today's project with a bunch of vintage wallpapers and uh, papers um, from some collage packs, and they'll be linked. Um, I'm putting everything down with my Liquitex matte medium. And I'm really just kind of playing and enjoying the vintage. I love vintage wallpapers. It's just one of my favorite things to use. It just gives it a real classic vintage feel. Um, I knew that I did want to have some of those flowers in the corners, so I made sure to place those in their spot. But everything else is just kind of wherever I felt it would go. So I'm using my Old World One stencil and some gesso and I'm using it with my brush and I because I just want to really push that gesso up against the sides of the stencil because it's going to give me some great, great texture. And I love using gesso in my stencils because it's just the right amount of texture, just subtle, um, but yet still there. So um, I forgot to turn the camera on, but I used my wing and a prayer um, stencil to draw the shape of the girl out, her body, um, from the stencil. And now I'm just going to cut it um, out of, and this is the, the paper that's actually in the subscriber resource library. It's the she paper. And um, I'm using that to, so that it, one, will stand out. And I really want that writing in the background. I'm just kind of laying it down to see if it's big enough, if I needed to make it bigger and enlarge it on the printer or not. But it worked out just fine to give me enough room for the wings and everything. So now I'm just I'm going to grab some more gesso and I'm just going to start pushing everything back. I'm using some water to kind of pull it back especially around the flowers because I really want those to really show up and stand out because there's not going to be a whole lot else going on in this piece besides the subtle texture and the, the peek through of the vintage wallpaper. And so I really want those flowers to kind of um, really show up. And this is a really soft um, piece for me, which is not my usual style, but it really went along with the piece. The peaceful feeling um, and everything that I was needing from my creative time as I created this. And so I'm just using gesso um, to kind of push everything back and unify it. And now I'm going to use a combination of Americana um, Glazing Medium, Van Dyke Brown, and Arteza's Gray, and just kind of really grungy up that background a little bit. I gotta have a little grunge in there. And and what this does too is it helps show off all of that texture that we did with the gesso. So I'll um, wipe this down and then I'll come back with some alcohol to kind of really expose those raised areas that are from the gesso. But just giving it a real good grungy kind of muted feel. Now I'm just coming back and really lifting off that color from the uh, raised areas and gesso. Now I'm just going to put down my girl with a little bit of, I say my girl, she's an angel. Uh, put her down with a little bit of Liquitex Matte Medium. Really get a good coverage and, and kind of get out all the wrinkles. And I'm coming back with my wing here in the same fashion with the brush and the gesso to really kind of just push that up against the stencil. I didn't want it to be perfect because I knew that I was going to kind of um, add to it and add a little bit of grunginess to it. Um, but I, I wanted to just kind of 
brush it out a little bit and extend it, the wings just a tiny bit. And um, then I'll come back and grunge it up a little bit. Gotta have a little grunge. So this, this color here is the Arteza's uh, Magenta Light and Beige and a little bit of gesso mixed together. It's super soft. To me, it was such a peaceful, calming color. And um, it goes a little pink. And, uh, it, and um, when I put some beige in it, it goes a little peachy too, um, which I, is not a color that I go to. But for whatever reason, this is what I was needing. And so I went with it. And I'm doing the layer really lightly because I want that writing to show through um, that I cut out for her body. Adding a little bit of beige and gesso to her face. And the writing in her face go naturally right across where her eyes would be, which I thought was really, I just loved it. So I didn't have to do a whole lot. So now here's where my grunge and my magic and all the goodness happens. So I, I have all of these um, jelly prints, grungy jelly prints, that are done on tissue paper and deli paper. And the colors and the grunginess are just fantastic. And so I'm really trying to incorporate them in my work. And I thought it would be perfect for the bottom part of her dress. And so I played for quite a while. This was like playing in the sandbox. It just makes me happy. I just tore and tore and tore little wonderful strips of all this grungy good paper and just created the bottom part of her skirt. Now this is some walnut ink on tissue paper. And as soon as I put this down, I knew right away that I just didn't like it. I thought if I added more, it would make it better. <laughs> and it didn't. So, um, you'll see me put this down and then cover it right back up with some more paper. And that's okay. That's part of the process. That's, that's how it works. Um, you never know unless you try. And I have confidence that, you know, you can always fix it. And so I'm never afraid to try something. And so now I'll just begin to start covering everything back up again. <laughs> I did want that brown piece for for like the belt or the the separation between the bodice and the the bottom of her her dress. And I really wanted to bring some of those strips all the way down to the bottom of the page to connect her to the to the piece so she didn't look like she was just really floating in midair. Um, so I brought all of that down to, to really draw the eye down and um, keep the eye moving. Now I'm just filling in some of the gaps um, for her body to connect to her wings and to add her arms. Now I'm going to add the wreath on her head, her headdress, um, just little dot, dots of um, olive green and um, just kind of placing that on her head and adding some little bit of light and a little bit of dark green and then I'll come back in and add some carmine red for some berries or flowers if you'd like to call them flowers, I call them berries.
And I'm doing the same process for the wreath that she's holding. And so now I'm going to make those wings not so perfect, not so soft, but really bring them out, bring them alive with some gesso and my palette knife. Give them some depth and some texture. All of the supplies will be listed on the blog and the link to the blog is down below in the YouTube description box. Um, all of the collage packs um, or collage papers that I used, everything will be listed on the blog. Now I'm just going to do my shading all the way around her, around her face, her body, her wings, just to bring her alive and make her pop off the the piece and just give her some depth and dimension shading in all of kind of the corners and crevices and um, around her skirt her the wreath everything I'll give her a little bit of shading on everything and then I will shade around the outside of her as I typically do in my Sean style and then I will add the word to her um, wreath which is peace and i hope you stick around for the conversation at the end it's a good one about what we need right now during this as we go into this crazy holiday season and what peace really looks like i'm adding just a little bit of highlight around her head to give her some some awe some specialness just a little bit of a halo a glow i guess i should say and then that is it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed today's project. If you did, subscribe, like, um, hit the alarm bell so you never miss a video. And I will see you next week. Well, there she is, my loves. Happy Sunday to you. Look at, she's just super, super sweet. Just gentle. Ah, I just, just love her. Um, this, this color is not my go-to color, but um, when I pulled my inspiration for this piece, I was pulling um, some of these grungy pieces of um, jelly prints that I wanted to incorporate in here and oh my goodness I just love the look love 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 it um, used my stencils as my guide I won't go over everything because I went over it through the video but I just love her sweet sweet um, and this is actually going to be a free 6x6 six six that you can download in the resource library for you um, to use for your personal use um, so you can get your hands on that in the resource library if you are not a subscriber to my weekly email there will be a link below um, or in the blog post where you can sign up for that <clears throat> and um, yeah then you and then you can get your hands on all kinds of fun stuff that's in the resource library but don't wait too long. Stuff doesn't stay in the resource library forever, so grab it and, and get it for you if you want. <clears throat> also, this week, um, when you see this, um, the, the sale is happening. The winter sale is happening. It's gone on for a couple days, but I just wanted to remind you. 
and you can hop on over there's clearance stencils clear everything is marked down the only thing that you need a coupon for is for the prints on wood and um, <clears throat> I'll have that down below as well um, or in the blog post so <clears throat> you can get your hands on some so regular stencils are on sale um, everything is on sale in the shop with the exception of totes and um, pillows and notebooks and those kinds of things but the clearance has been marked down originals have been marked down everything is on sale so and the prints because there's so many of them you have to use a coupon for those so I um, hope you can grab some goodies for you yours your people um, uh, prints on wood are great for co-workers and gifts and different things like that if you don't have the time to make your own so this is just this was just a quiet moment um, where I want it's this season it's the season my friends of chaos it's you know it's just one of those things and it's just like that all the time and so I'm constantly constantly searching for that peaceful moment um, that I can kind of retreat to to get my bearings and, and be okay and all those kinds of things um, and I, I just want to remind you that peace doesn't mean that everything is okay. Peace doesn't mean that all the relatives get along and that there aren't any conflicts or traveling isn't hard or whatever it is that might be happening during this season. Um, Peace just means that we have this internal thing that happens with us that we know we're going to survive it, that we have the control over our emotions and our all of that um, to withstand whatever is happening around us. Peace is this thing of being able to recognize our own frustrations and our own emotions and being able to control them and not add to the, to the fire or to the whatever else that's going on. That doesn't mean that we don't, we're not validating our feelings or anything like that, but that we can assess our feelings in that peaceful place and work our way through them and then come out of that with value and um, be able to help um, the whatever area, situation, things that we're in. So peace, this peace for me is just being able to know that I've, I'm okay inside and that I'm just walking through the crazy time or whatever it is for you um, and that I have the strength and I have the guidance for me, for me, um, I have divine guidance. That's how I feel. Um, it can be different for you, um, but I know that I'm not alone and that I, ha I have everything, have been given everything to be able to go to that peaceful place, to find that peace, and to um, retreat there so that it, nothing can, can overwhelm me. It's a daily practice. Let me just say that it's not perfect, and it, um, you know, I can get to a place where it's super crazy, and I'm feeling so much anxiety. And as soon as I get there, I know what I need to do for myself, and I hope that that is the case for you. Whenever you're in that situation, whether it's holiday season or not. Um, that you can recognize your own emotional cues and be able to retreat back to that place of peace and restore your own soul. Because when we can do that, then we have the ability to help others. We have the ability to calm situations. We have the ability to think and see clearly. And it's so key during this time of holiday chaos or any other type of uh, whatever you might be going through. Um, being able to think and see clearly separate from our emotions helps us stay in that peaceful place. All right, my loves, I hope by the time you see this, you will have been through Thanksgiving. And if you celebrate Thanksgiving, I hope it was peaceful. 
um, because that's really all we can hope for because there's always um, personalities and things that a family that come together that can you know cause all kinds of stuff or there can be um, <clears throat> change and transition as we go through the holidays all I wish for you is that you have peace in the place that you're at and um, so I hope it was that for you and as we move forward got what three weeks or so until Christmas or what had something like that um, yeah it's kind of a race to the finish at this point so I just really really want peace for you during this time and I hope that you always always know that you are loved <laughs>